Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Dave. Welcome to episode four. In this episode, we're going to go over everything we currently know about Starship's thermal heat tiles. If you like this video, why don't you go ahead and hit like and subscribe. It will help us give you better content in future videos. First, a little history on heat shields and thermal heat tiles. During the Apollo missions, NASA used a honeycomb structure made of silica fibers and epoxy resin. This heat shield was only good for one use and took a lot of damage on re-entry. When the space shuttle was built, it was made of aluminum skin and covered in nearly 20,000 heat tiles to resist the extreme heat on re-entry. These tiles were made of essentially silica and quartz sand. No two tiles were exactly the same, but they prevented heat transfer to the shuttle's aluminum skin. These tiles were glued on and required exact placement, almost like assembling a very difficult puzzle. Cleanliness was essential during this process. They also required extensive inspection. These tiles were tested to approximately 1260 degrees Celsius or 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. These tiles were such poor conductors of heat that you could hold the tile in your hand while it was red hot and not get burned. This was necessary as it wouldn't radiate the heat into the hull of the ship. This is actually pretty cool to watch. This is what happens when your trajectory isn't quite right and your heat shield isn't doing its job. Mike is out of your view. Luckily, this is an unmanned capsule. The capsule actually explodes here. There's a huge burst. There was the burst, frosted. Truck didn't get it. You have to breathe. When it's all over, there's actually little or nothing left. If nothing else, this is a great lesson on why you want to get your heat shields right. But Starship was a totally different animal. Something special would be needed to cool this ship for multiple re-entries. SpaceX's original plan was to use regenerative heat shielding, in which liquid methane would be pumped through small holes in the outer hull. But this became a problem when they realized something as simple as bird droppings could plug the holes and stop the process. Because of this, SpaceX was back to the idea of using heat tiles. But the same old type of tile wasn't going to work for Starship. First, these tiles had to be used over and over again with very little maintenance. This meant they had to be mechanically attached, unlike the space shuttle tiles that were glued on. 
SpaceX ended up opting for hexagonal tiles made of a ceramic and glass composition. The reason for this is how the superheated air reacts to the seams as it flows over the tile. When laid out in this manner, there are no seams in the direction of airflow. This deters deterioration due to extreme heating. SpaceX performed testing to simulate the heating during re-entry. During these tests, the heat tiles got as hot as 1650 degrees Kelvin, which is about 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. Coupled with the heat resistance of 301 stainless, this should be more than sufficient for re-entry. These were full duration re-entry tests in which the tiles were maintained at the temperature that they would see during re-entry. During the Cargo Dragon mission, SpaceX placed some heat tiles on the outer hull to test quality of performance. They ended up performing as expected. We will have to wait and see how this all works out for Starship when it's launched into orbit and returns on our orbital re-entry. And so it's, it sort of goes like that and slows down and, it, and then it falls like a skydiver. And, and then it rights itself, um, fires the engine and lands on the fins. I mean, this will look really epic in person. Uh, it looks like guarantees to be exciting. And you can see it's sort of falling, falling body first for quite a while. It's really quite, quite gentle. You're just sort of falling at terminal velocity for, for quite a long time. Very gentle fall, just sort of like floating down. And then it rights itself at the end, fires the engines and lands. It's, it's very counterintuitive. It's not like anything that people are familiar with. It's not like an airplane or, yeah. And then obviously, if you're landing on the moon, um, you don't need any aerodynamic surfaces at all uh, because you just, there's no, there's no air. Um, you just need thrusters.